the Covenant Partners and friends welcome you to Voice of Joy Word Ministries. Voice of Joy is a family church, a training center, and a restoring body. We are called to cover the earth with total man ministry. Now for today's message. And welcome to Voice of Joy Word Ministries International. I am Elder Jackie, and I am so excited that you are here with me on our Tuesday night encounter. And I tell you, God is doing some great and marvelous things as we continue in our book, Discover the Hidden You by Dr. Miles Monroe. We just want to, first of all, give out a shout out to our overseer, Overseer Angela Coleman. We also want to give a big shout out to our pastors, Pastor Vanilla Pittman, as well as Pastor Andrea Selby. We thank God for Voice of Joy Word Ministries, Covenant Partners, and all those who are connected to the house. And we just thank God for you. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go in prayer and Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God, for it tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for being such an awesome and amazing God. God, we thank you, Lord God, and as we have been through this day and, and, and continue to go through this day, God, we release our day to you in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you for keeping us all day long. Thank you, Lord God, for just keeping our minds, keeping our bodies, just keeping our hearts. Thank you, Lord God, for you being Papa to us, taking good care of us, oh God. And God, as we just go through on tonight with the lesson you have before us. God, help us, Lord God, to, to make this word as plain as day. God, we thank you, Lord God, that we will grab this word and begin to live this word out in Jesus' name. So we glorify you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So with me. Come on, let's bless Papa in the house. Let's bless Papa. Glory to God while you're on the road, if you in your homes or on your job. We're blessing Papa today, giving him glory for today because this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Ah, tell your body you will rejoice. I know you're tired, but we will rejoice because God is good and his mercy and do it forever. So we just give God the praise. We give him the honor and the glory. So we just thank God for tonight. Thank you for joining me tonight. Go ahead and share this, um, this broadcast as well as share with your friends and let them know, come on in. It's time for an encounter with God. And so remember we were talking about what an is, what is an encounter encounter is when you are having an unexpected meeting with someone or something. So we're going to cut out the something and we're going to say an unexpected meeting with someone. And that is our Papa God, the one who loves you, the one who cares for you, the one that wants the best for you. And so we want to meet with him tonight. Amen. And so I just thank God for what he is doing in this season. I thank God for this month of June and how God is moving by his spirit. And Lord, again, if anything that you are doing in this season. Don't do it without me. Can I get a witness? Oh God in the house. And so uh, we are here with the book with Dr. Miles Monroe, the secret to living the good life. And it says, discover the hidden you. And so we talked about um, discover the hidden you, something that's in you that needs to be found, found out, something that's in you that needs to come out and to come unfold and so that the world and so that your home can be blessed, so that you can be blessed. And it's because it's time for you to come forth. It's time to show what the world has been missing. It's been missing what was it, what is on the inside of you. And that's what we're talking about. That potential that's on the inside that God has put in you, that God is ready for you to discover that and begin to bring that forth. And we can't bring that forth. If you don't find out what's in you, what has God put in your hand? What's your talent? What's your ability? What's your gift? And he wants to take that thing, that gift, that talent, that potential that's in you, that ability. And he wants you to bring it forth in the world because the world is waiting for it. Oh, my God. Your family is waiting for it. 
Your future is waiting for it. Your next business transaction is waiting for the hidden you to come forth. Oh, glory to God. And I'm not talking about coming out of the closet. I'm talking about coming out of you. The, the thing that God has put in you come out of you. The person that has been dormant, the person that just been sitting there and not moving and I'm scared to move and I'm comfortable where I'm at. Now it's time to get uncomfortable. Hallelujah. In your spot so that God can use you to his glory. Remember in the week before we begin to say that it is irresponsible for you to die with that potential on the inside of you. It is irresponsible of you, of me to leave this earth with what God has put in me and not allowing it to come forth, my savior. So we're going to move on. So this week's chapter in chapter 49, we're going to talk about I am going, I'm going to. I'm going to, that's the name and of the chapter is I'm going to, and listen to the scriptures that he opened up with. And he says the temple I am going to build will be great because our God is greater than any other God. That is in second Chronicles two and five. It also reads my father's house, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have not told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? That is John 14 and two. The next one says, so you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And that is what I am going to proclaim to proclaim to you. Oh, who you are serving. So that is Acts 17 and 23. And, and we're talking about, I am going to, that means there is somewhere to go. That means there is a forward moving. There's not a settling. There is not a being comfortable. There is not, um, just being dormant. No, I am going to, I'm going to do something. He began to say, I'm going to build, or I'm going there, or I'm going to proclaim. There is something for us to do. Oh God, listen to this. It says after Adam, after God created Adam, he gave him a job. God knew Adam's potential to name all the animals would never be released unless it was challenged. Potential must be exercised to be fulfilled. Can you say that with me? Potential must be exercised to be fulfilled. That means it has to do something. It has to have a going to it. Now listen to to this. I, I remember just having conversations, you know, um, in, in time past, you know, with, with my husband and always I used to hear, oh, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I said, no, we got to stop saying I'm trying and start saying I'm going, I'm going to do this because every time you say I'm trying, that's giving an excuse or I'm trying that gives you an excuse to be lazy. They give you an excuse to slack off. They give you an excuse to stay comfortable. No, but if you're saying I'm going to do something, that's going to push you into another direction and not ha- allow you to sit and settle. All right. So potential must be exercised to be fulfilled. It said demands must be made on potential if it is to be released and fulfilled. You got to put a demand on the potential that is in you. So let me bring I'm going to into this day and time and what they are doing now. And so I work at this school and I look at the wall and I'm like, man, I like the statement that they have on the wall. And it starts to begin with or state it says the power of yet. And so I'm going to take and intertwine. I am going to with the power of yet. Now, listen to this. It helps you to develop a growth mindset. When you say I'm going or yet, that means there is something has to come after that yet. That means it haven't been done yet. That means I'm going to do this. Okay. Now listen to some of the statements. It says, I cannot do this yet. This does not work yet. I don't know yet. It doesn't make sense yet. I'm not good at this yet. I don't get this yet yet see that yet gives you another push that means i'm not going to stop at i can't do this and just settle and just settle and just sit it doesn't stop at it doesn't work uh, it doesn't work whatever what it is what it is no it is not it is what it is all right 
It is what you say it is. And if you say yet, that means there is still something to do. There's still some going that we need to go to. <laughs> Amen. I don't know. Oh my goodness. I, when I used to work at a company, um, a finance company and we couldn't say, I don't know. They didn't want us to say, I don't know the word. Well, the, the phrase was, I'm not sure, but I will check into it. I'm not sure, but that means I'm not going to leave it at. I don't know. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to research. I'm not going to step out. No, if I say I don't know of, I'm not sure, but I will look into it. Guess what? You are giving that that um, that window uh, or a door open. I'll say that they give you room, wiggle room. There you go. Give you some wiggle room. And they say it doesn't make sense yet. Oh, my goodness. Your next level doesn't make sense yet. What he's telling you to do doesn't make sense. But put a yet on that. I'm going to step out on faith yet. I'm going to speak when he say speak yet. I'm going to move when he say move. All right. So your potential must be exercised to be fulfilled. Demands must be made on your potential if it is to be released and fulfilled. It says God has given you potential. Can you write that down? If you are taking notes, put it in your phone, speak it into your phone. God has given me potential. Make it personal. God has given me potential. So we're going to change out of the try and I'm going to try it. No, we're going to go. We're going to use the power of the yet. Oh, my goodness. So listen to this about um, let me finish this out. It says unless you make a demand on it, you will die with it. Die with what? Your potential. Is that God has given you potential is that unless you make demands on that potential, you will die with that potential. Remember, we talked about last week. There are so many graves out there and, and with with potential just laying there because they didn't find out what they what was hidden in them. They didn't step out on what God has spoke to them. They didn't move on that talent or they didn't move on that gift or they trying to figure out what people are going to say or how they're going to receive me. That is not your business. It's not your business to figure out how they're going to receive you. All you have to do is step out and do. Oh, my goodness. We're trying to figure it out from A to Z. And God said, I just want you to step out on the A. I'll take care of the Z. I'll take care of the, 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 the B through the Z. I just need you to step out. I just need you to put a demand on your talent. Put a demand on your ability. Put a demand on what I put in you. Listen, I like this. I went and had and did some um, synonyms and antonyms of potential because God has given you potential. God has given you potential. I'm going to say it one more time because it sounds so good. God has given you potential. This is what he given you. He gave you something. Something is hidden in you. He gave you a future. He gave you something that's imaginable. He gave you something that's plausible, unrealized, likable. He gave you something implied. He gave you something lurking. Ooh. He gave you something that's undeveloped. He gave you something that's thinkable. He's think he gave you something that's probable. He gave you something that's conceivable. So what is in you is conceivable. What is in you is thinkable, is probable, is undeveloped, ready to be developed. Lurking. When I think about lurking, that means that something on the inside is just moving around and just looking for that time to just burst forth. Oh, my goodness. He gave you something that's likable. That's on the inside of you. Oh, let me change that. It's likely. <laughs> that means it's likely to happen. It's on the inside of you. We put ourselves down before we even step out. Oh, glory to God. If you have already put yourself down or called yourself out, oh, put yourself back into the race. And say, this is going to be my yet moment. This is going to be my going to moment. Now listen to the antonyms. That means something that is against and opposite of um, what we're talking about. Opposite of your potential. Unlikely. He didn't put you, put that in you. He didn't put the unlikely in you. It says helpless. Why my God? He didn't put the helpless in you. Think the, the impossible. He didn't put the impossible in you. It says lacking. Oh, my goodness. He didn't put lacking in you. And the last one is unpromising. He didn't put that in you. 
He put the potential in you. He put the opposite in you because he know that once you make a decision to step out on what he has put in you or to bring out what he has put in you. Oh, guess what's going to happen? The future is going to happen. The imaginable is going to happen at Ephesians 3 and 20. Oh, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can dare ask or imagine according to the power that worketh in you. Oh, my goodness. That thing that's lurking on the inside of you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so I just want to let you know that we are making decision this month. We are making decision tonight that we will not allow what God has put is on the inside of us to die. Oh, goodness. It says, unless you venture to try things you've never done before, you will never experience the wealth that lives within you. Unless you just take that 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 um, curiosity and say, you know what? I'm going to try something new, man. How many of us say, oh, I don't like that. I don't like trying new things. Oh, I don't like trying new food. But if you try, you'll know if you like it or not. But then if you tried it, maybe that would be the best thing you ever tasted. Or maybe that was the best experience you have ever experienced. But we won't we won't know that because we won't step out because we won't just try it. We won't venture out just just a little just a little step. We're so comfortable with being comfortable. We have not tapped into what God has gave, has put into us. Oh, goodness. It says unless you venture to try things you have never done before, you will never experience the wealth wealth that lives within you. Decide today. That's what we were just talking about, right? Decide today. I am going to do something I've never done before. I am going to get a promotion this year in my job. I am going to win more people to Jesus this year than my church and my pastors ever did. It says, if you have a business result to cut the overhead and increase the service. Give your potential some demands. Give your ability some demands. Put a demand on you. We got on demand on our TV. No, put a demand on you. It's that it needs to be maximized and challenged. And let me give you a voice of your word. It need, you need to be stretched out of that comfort, comfort, comfortability, out of that comfort zone. That's what I want, that comfort zone. That word is stretched. It said the greatest work in the world will be done by people who don't care who get the credit. Mm, 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 mm. Come on now. The greatest works in the world will be done by people who don't care who gets the credit. They got to see me, myself, and I lights, name and lights. He says, no, I don't care who gets the credit. I know that what God has put in me is going to bless somebody. And if I don't get the credit, it don't matter. It don't matter because actually what God has put in you, he should get the credit. He should get the credit. He put that talent in you. He put that gift in you, man. If you can sing, he put that gift in you. Use it to his glory. If you are a computer genius, use that to his glory. My goodness. If you are a teacher, teach to his glory, because I tell you, you will. Oh, man change lives because you're teaching and singing and, and ministering and, and doing all kinds of things. I'm telling you, God is ready for you to bring that thing that is hidden out of you. Ah, let's keep going. It says, I listen to this. I love these statements he put in here. He says, I don't care to be famous. I just want to be faithful. I don't care to be well known. I just want to be well used. That's a good one. I don't want to be powerful. I want to be potent. Oh, yes. I want what I do make a difference. I want what I do. Oh, change lives. I want what I do. Oh, God was spread. But it won't spread if you don't venture out. It won't spread if you don't step out on faith. 
Can we say step out on faith? That's what I'm going to use tonight. Step out on faith, what God has put into you and watch God move on your behalf. He's just waiting for somebody to step. It says success requires striking out on new paths instead of traveling those those paths that's well known. Man. Just begin to say, God, I'm going to make a decision today to step out on faith. To discover the hidden me, the thing that has been I've been looking for for years and years and I'm getting frustrated because I should be moving forward and I'm not. I'm irritated because I should be in a different place and I'm not. Oh, I'm aggravated because I should be on a different level and I'm not. What is it? What is it? It's it's in you. And actually what it's trying to do is trying to burst up out of you. Oh my goodness. That's where the irritation and the frustration, the aggravation coming from, because it's trying to get up out of you. It's trying to stretch up out of you. But because of fear, and because of disappointment or, oh, I tried it, but it didn't work out. But listen to this. Remember this? <laughs> it doesn't make sense yet. I'm not good at this yet. I don't get this yet. That yet opens up new doors. Oh, that yet gives you a second win. I, I really pray that I am giving you a second win tonight. Listen to this. There are some, there are four steps to the accomplishment of your dream. There are four steps. All right, here we go. I'm going to give them to you and then we're going to break those things down. All right. So the first one is to prepare, prepare prayerfully. We can say those P's tonight. <laughs> prepare prayerfully. That's number one. Number two, plan purposefully, purposefully. Yes, plan purposefully. That's number two. Number three, proceed positively. Proceed positively. There you go. I want to positively. Pursue, number four, persistently. Pursue persistently. You hear all those P's? That's your prayerfully prepare us. All right. So prepare prayerfully. Plan purposefully. Proceed positively. And pursue persistently. Again, prepare prayerfully. Plan purposefully. Proceed positively. And pursue persistently. So I wanted to add some scriptures to those. And because I know we'll say, okay, I want to prepare, I want to prepare, but it has to be done in prayer. And I and I like that. Come out the doors and come out the gate knowing that you have prayed this thing through. What is on the inside of you, you're gonna need to spend some time with Papa, the one who put it in you. So you will need to spend some time with Papa getting that out. So to prepare prayerfully, let's go to Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation for you tonight. It says, trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you and he will lead you in every decision that you make. The sixth verse reads, become intimately, no, no, become intimate with him in whatever you do and he will lead you wherever you go. I love that. Become intimate with him in whatever you do and he will lead you wherever you go. Prepare prayerfully yes begin to trust him completely with what he has put on the inside of you if we're making this decision today if we're making this decision this month that God what is hidden on the inside of me I'm going to prepare myself prayerfully I'm going to get in the closet I'm going to close the door behind me and I'm going to get on my face 
and I'm going to pray this thing out, pray this thing through. And then Proverbs 3, um, 5 through 6 begin to say that I'm going to trust in your Lord completely with it. OK, this is my hidden thing that's on the inside of me. I'm going to trust you, Lord, completely with it. And I'm not going to rely on my own opinions. Oh, I should have, could have, would have or or what if. And it said with all your heart, rely on him to guide you. Where he guides, he will provide. Can I say that again? Where he guides, he will provide. And it said he will lead you in. He will lead you in every decision that you make. And then just become intimate with him. That's where the, the prayer comes in that, 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 that you come intimate with him. That means you getting to know him. You get to know his plan. You get to, to know what his heart is for you. Because the thing that's on his heart is what he put on the inside of you. And he hid it so that you begin to search that thing out and begin to know, okay, this is what God want me to do. And, 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 and I'm saying this because the, the one who put the potential in you is the one you should be mimicking, the one you should be following after, the one that you should be concerned about what his voice is about it and not what other people's voice is about it. But come intimate with him in whatever you do and he will lead you wherever you go. So whatever you have in you and the plan that is written out when you in your prayer time guess what he'll start leading you to the people he'll start leading you to um to the the the, the, the websites that you need to go to he'll start leading you to different companies and, and he'll start leading you to this and leading you to that and i tell you it's going to it's going to flourish it's going to come forth it's going to come forth because you put in the necessary work to bring it out Psalms 37, 23 through 25. It begins to read when Yahweh delights in how you live your life, he establish every steps. Mm -mm -mm. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And this is in the Passion Translation. Psalms 37, 23 through 25. It says when Yahweh delights in how you live your life, he established your every steps. If you, if they stumble badly, they will, they will still survive for the Lord lifts them up with his hands. I was once inexperienced. This is David talking. I was once inexperienced, but now I'm old. Not once have I found a lover of God forsaken by him, nor have any of their children gone hungry. Do you hear that? He began to say, Unless you venture to try things you have never done before, you will never experience the wealth lives within you. So take Proverbs 3, 5, um, three, five through 6, and Psalms 37, 23 to 20, through 25, and begin to meditate on those things. And begin to know that that every step you take, he is always going to be there. And I love that if you are intimate with him, he will lead you wherever you go. One more thing. One more thing. Proverbs 16 and, and 9. It says, with your heart, you make plans for your future. But the Lord chooses the steps you take to get there. He's just waiting. He is. He's just waiting. He said, with your heart, you make your plans for the future. It said, but the Lord chooses the steps you take to get there. Mm. He's just waiting for you to step out on A so he can take you to Z. This is um, June. That means we are halfway in this year. He is waiting for you to step out so he can see you through December 31st. My goodness. Don't let June leave without you even tapping into some of the potential that is hitting on the inside of you. The next one, plan purposefully. We want to make sure you plan that um, and put some purpose behind that. Make sure, okay, I'm going to do this and give your why. I love that. I remember having a meeting with our bishop and, and overseer one time, and he was saying, what is your why? Why are you doing this? And make sure you get your why. While you in that, that prayer closet, and behind those closed doors, go ahead and get your why so you can proceed um, purposefully. Oh, goodness. That means you got to have a plan. 
Oh my goodness. And then with that plan, you bring it before God and then God's going to bring that plan to pass, but you got to have a plan. We're not, we're not going to go out uh, uh, and step out on, on faith on nothing. Oh, I'm just going to step out here. What you going to step out on? All right. Proceed positively. Proceed positively. Move forward with a positive attitude. See, we got to move away from the noise. We got to get away from the negativity. People talking, oh, this ain't going to work. I don't know why you're doing this. I tried that. It ain't work for me. This is not you. This is the potential that God has put into me. And guess what? I'm going to proceed with a positive attitude. I'm going to move forth with a positive attitude. Listen to this. Isaiah 26, three through four. Also in the passion, it says perfect, absolute peace around those who whose imaginations are consumed with you. That means with Papa God. It says they confidently trust in you. Yes, trust in the Lord Yahweh forever and ever. And for Yah, the Lord God is your rock of, is the rock of ages. That means he is the one that's going to be your rock. He's going to be your stability. He's going to be your hope. He's going to be your standby. He's going to be your comforter. And all he needs you to do is set your mind on him because he said he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And this is the passion translation. It says perfect, absolute peace surrounds those whose imagination are consumed with God. See, we're going to take, we need to get away from the noise of the world and be consumed with God, consumed with what he says, consumed with what he's spoken, consumed with what he has, 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 has um, put on the inside of you. And he's ready to bring that thing out. Ah, thank you, Lord. And pursue persistently. Pursue persistently. That means don't quit. Don't give up. Don't let words stop you. Don't let um, no stop you because no is not the final answer. If God has already said yes to you, no is not the final answer. Is that your final answer? No. (laughs) Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, listen to this. Pursue persistently. So I just did the definition of pursue and persistently. It says pursue to follow in order to overtake. God wants you to pursue persistently. He wants you to follow in order to overtake. Not pursue to sit or pursue to get comfortable, but pursue to overtake. I I, I love, um, you know, our statement that our family use. We don't take sides. We take over. (laughs) that's, That's all it is. We don't take sides. We take over persistently continuing without changing in the function or the structure continuing without change in the function or structure persistently now I put those two together all right it says to follow in order to overtake continuing without change in the function or the structure or the focus or from the word that God has spoken in your life That's put those two words together, two definitions together. And I added my little something something to it too. It says to follow in order to overtake continuing without change in the function. That means we're not going to change the word that God has spoken. We're not going to change our mind. Hallelujah. We're not going to change because somebody said this is not going to work. We're not going to change because somebody says, oh, this is not going to happen for you. But to follow in order to overtake, continuing without change to the function or structure. And I, and I love this. Continue without the change to your focus. Remember, we said we're going to keep our mind stayed on him. It says from the word that has been spoken. And I put that because if God said something to you. And he spoke that into your spirit. He spoke that into your space. He spoke that into your atmosphere. Keep that. Hold on to it. Hold tight. Oh, my goodness. What it said, being dogmatic. Take that dog, well, bulldog faith and hold on to it until manifestation come forth. 
Don't allow anything, anyone, any person, any word to remove you from what God has said to you, has spoken on the inside of you. Don't let challenges. Oh, don't they, don't don't allow the the words of the world, the noise. That's why I want to say the noise of the world to move you from your stance. Glory to God. And listen to this Psalm, no Philippians, excuse me, Philippians one and six in the easy version. It says, I know that God has begun to do good things in you. And I am sure that he will continue to work in you. Then on the day when Jesus Christ return, his work in you will be finished. That means Christ has not returned yet. That means there is work for you to do. And the work that God has put in you, he's going to see it to flourish. Hallelujah. It's that I know that God has begun a good thing in you. Can we let's can we put me in the U's? All right. We're going to change the U to me. It says, I know that God has begun a good thing in me. And I am sure that he will continue to work in me. Amen. Pursue persistently. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. If you have, I'm picking it up. Oh, let me use my paper. I'm picking it up and I'm giving it back to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your family is waiting for the hidden you to be discovered. Your business, your job, your employer. Oh God, your next is waiting for the hidden you to be discovered. And know that God has put potential on the inside of you. He put potential on the inside of you. It's him that did this. He did this. Thank you, Lord. And now it's time for us to allow that door and allow those windows and allow that to open up so that we can enjoy the wealth of a good life. Hallelujah. So. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord God, for today. We thank you, Lord God, for the word of God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing. Thank you, Lord God, for we are standing right now with the power of yet on the inside of us. That we have not seen the person that you have um, called forth yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that we are going to step out. We are going to discover the hidden us. We are going to move forth in the name of Jesus. And right now, God, I pray for the courage. Oh, my goodness, the courage in them to step forth, to even go into their prayer room and to begin to dig and to, to understand and begin to discover what's on the inside of them. Thank you, Lord God. And I even pray for healing of hurt, Lord God, and disappointment and discouragement. I pray for that hurt, Lord God. I even speak to the spirit of uh, rejection, Lord God. Oh, I say you have to leave right now in the name of Jesus, the spirit of abandonment. You have to leave right now in the name of Jesus. And these people of God who is moving forth, making a decision today, hallelujah, to move forth, loose them now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing and what you are getting ready to do in this season, in this month. This is a month of movement. This is a month of growth. This is a month of potentials being discovered. This is a month, hallelujah, that th th those who were scared to step out will find the courage to step out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you that it would not just sit on a Tuesday night encounter, but it will begin to resonate all through this month in the name of Jesus. Thank you for moving, God. Thank you for doing it, Lord God. I thank you for testimonies coming forth, God, in this month that I stepped out on my potential. I gave my, my potential a demand. I gave my ability a responsibility and God moved on my behalf. 
Oh, we are expecting, Lord God, something great and mighty, Lord God. We are expecting something to come forth, oh, like never before in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we thank you for what you're doing, Lord God, and what you're getting ready to do. Thank you for, Lord God, what you are getting ready to do in your people. Oh, in the name of Jesus. So we thank you, Lord God, for all things in Jesus name. We pray amen and amen. Thank you for joining me tonight. I tell you, I enjoyed this and I am always just enjoying what God is opening up and doing. So as the word is going forth for you, believe me, it is coming towards me. And believe me, I am trying. I am not trying. Ah, I said something about that word, didn't you? I am going to find out that hidden Jackie, that hidden potential that he put into me. And we're going to tap into something marvelous. We're going to tap into something great. Oh, best to believe. Hallelujah. Because our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Hallelujah. And so join me again on next Tuesday as we begin to talk about the true vine. All right. So next week we will talk about the true vine. Again, I am Elder Jackie. Thank you for joining me tonight.